Mom abandoned my siblings at my door, so I called the cops. I'm 20 m and I moved out of my parents' house when I turned 18 because I couldn't stand living with them anymore. The reasons are probably what you'd expect, constant favoritism toward my younger siblings, using me as free childcare, and the classic what's yours is mine attitude. When I left, my dad told me not to let the door hit me on the way out and not to bother coming back. I found a cheap, small apartment and have been working full-time for the past two years. It didn't even take a month before my parents started calling me, begging me to return because, without me, someone else had to take care of my siblings. I refused. Finally, I had some time for myself. My dad went as far as demanding that I move back and pay rent to them, claiming that family was more important than my personal independence. I shot back that my life mattered too, and for once, I was living it for me. He ended the conversation by saying, see how long you can last without us, and we didn't talk for months after that. I don't know what he expected, but I did just fine on my own. Eventually, they seemed to accept that I wasn't going to come crawling back. Over time, we mended things, sort of. They hated that I was now living on my terms. They'd occasionally beg me to watch my youngest siblings, even though my two closest siblings in age are mid-teens now. But my parents don't want to burden them with babysitting, which is laughably hypocritical considering how often I was made to do it. I've called them out on that, which always led to gaslighting and months of silence. But as usual, they came crawling back. Recently, I bought myself a used Nintendo Switch, though I could only afford one game, Mario Kart, which came bundled with the console. One Saturday, my mom dropped by and asked me to watch my two youngest siblings for a while. She basically shoved them inside and left, leaving me stuck in my tiny apartment with two rowdy kids all day. She didn't come back until after 9pm, and only because I called her and demanded she pick them up. She wasn't happy that I cut her fun time short. I told her straight up that unless she paid me, I wasn't babysitting anymore. And if she tried just dropping them off again, I wouldn't open the door and would call the cops. The next morning, I couldn't find my switch. I called my parents and sure enough, one of my siblings had taken it. I told them I was coming over to get it, but my mom said it could wait because my youngest sibling was using it, and she didn't want to take it away. I told her it was mine, and I'd be taking it back immediately. I biked over as fast as I could. When I got there, my sibling was crying because the switch had died and they didn't have the charger. I told them to give it back, but my dad grabbed it and said I could have it back when I agreed to help with my siblings more. I warned him that I'd call the police if he didn't give it back, and he didn't believe me. So, I pulled out my phone and started dialing. That's when my mom freaked out, grabbed the switch from my dad, and handed it back to me. My dad called her a traitor, demanding she give it back to him instead, but she said it wasn't worth having the police call on them. Before I left, I told them that if this happened again, I'd call the police first. If they wanted a switch so badly for my siblings, they could buy their own. My dad shouted that I couldn't disrespect him like that, and I shot back that, as an adult, I'm done with him disrespecting me. I walked out while he kept yelling at me to come back and face him. Now, they've gone silent again. My mom texted me once, begging me to watch my siblings, but I told her I'd only do it if she paid me up front because I'm not doing it for free anymore, especially after they tried to steal from me. They don't own me. I'm an adult with my own life, and they can either accept that or get lost. It's been over a week since that text, and I haven't heard from any of them. Honestly, I'm fine with it. They can handle their own mess from now on. Update. I call the cops on my mom for child abandonment, and I kicked my dad in the macaroons. As some know, I previously posted about my parents refusing to give back my Nintendo Switch when one of my siblings stole it. And many commenters had a lot to say about the shit my parents were doing. And to just call police or CPS if my parents ever dumped my youngest siblings off at my door without asking again. Well, I waited and waited, but there was no contact between us for around three months since the last time my mom called, and I refused to watch my siblings without being paid. Then it finally hit. My parents called me all of a sudden wanting me to babysit. And they acted like the prior incident with the switch never happened. I told them I was not going to babysit unless they paid me. And it'd have to be a day that I had off work. My schedule had also shifted so I no longer had Saturdays off. I actually asked my boss for that since Saturdays were the days they asked me to babysit the most. Plus, picking up an extra shift was better for me financially. My dad got furious as usual and said that I needed to man up and help out. So I pointed out that he needs to stop acting like he has control over me. And technically, I'm manning up for myself and my own life, like he always claimed he did at my age. Yet he always worked Saturdays and put a ton of his responsibilities on me. So he could fuck off as far as I was concerned. He started yelling violently into the phone, and my mom took it away from him. I said I could only babysit Sundays because that's my only day off. And I would only do it if they paid me $30 and included pre-packed lunches, dinners, and snacks for my siblings. Because I wasn't going to waste my money providing food for them. That's not my job. And if they took anything from me, like when my switch was stolen last time, I would get police involved to get it back. I saved the receipt when I bought it and documented the serial numbers so I'd have no problem proving to police it's mine. My mom's bitch mode kicked in, and she started swearing like a sailor that just broke a tooth at me. I let her have her rant while pretty much ignoring the phone until she realized I wasn't responding and started demanding I say something. So I said that she and dad have my conditions. Sundays only, $30 and prepackaged food or they could F off. There was a moment of silence on the line. And then my mom went off on me again and said that my younger siblings, who are 14 and 15, had to step up to help because I wasn't helping anymore and they needed a break. I laughed and said, go? Like how you guys gave me breaks? Like never. My mom tried to say that was different. And it was because I was the oldest child. I said that it wasn't different. 
They prettified me, and I lost out on a bunch of my childhood because of it, and now I'm living my own life without them. And they are hypocrites to act like I should step up again when I'm no longer living there, and they have two teenagers in the house that can do everything I used to do. My mom shifted into victim mode and started saying that my teenage siblings were rebelling and not listening to them. I said their bitching and moaning wasn't my problem. They need to figure out alternative childcare, I'm too busy with having a life. My dad got back on the phone and started yelling at me some more, I just laughed at him and said he was just blowing hot air. And that he was talking but not really saying anything, my mom took the phone back and pleaded with me one more time. I reiterated Sundays only with prepackaged food and $30. And I won't hesitate at all to call the police if any threats are made or any of my stuff gets stolen. I heard my parents start loudly yelling back and forth at each other over what to do, so I said they can just work it out and get back to me later, then I hung up. It was right back to radio silence for about a while. Then one Saturday morning, a few weeks later, I was getting ready for work when there was a sudden, loud, and fast knock at my door. The kind where you know they're doing it with both hands. My mom's done that for years as her knocking trademark to let me know she was there. And she knows I know the sound of it very well. And the knocking was followed by what sounded like someone loudly running down the corridor. I listened through the door and could hear my two youngest siblings bickering with each other and tapping on the door themselves. My mother just left them outside the door and ran, but because of all the warnings I got in my last post, I had a simple plan for this. I just opened my window, climbed out, and simply walked away. My apartment is at ground level all the way at the end of the building, and I can climb out the window I have there easily by just pulling the screen out. I called one of my neighbors that lives a few doors down. She's a sweet old lady that likes kids. And I gave her the rundown. She's known about my situation with my narcissist parents for a while now and called police for me to tell them that there were two kids left abandoned in the hall after the mother pounded on a door and took off. Suffice to say the police came and picked up my siblings. My parents called me later and were furious. I pretended to be clueless and asked what they were so mad about. My mom fully admitted she left my two youngest siblings at my door for me to babysit and ran. I asked if she just left them there without anyone answering the door. Because I was already out since I had to work Saturdays. My mom just got really quiet for a few seconds then yelled, how the hell was I supposed to know that? I countered that this was all her fault. And she literally abandoned her kids at my door in the hopes that maybe I was home, on a day I'd already told her several times I worked. Like she was trying to force me to skip a shift by trying to give me no choice but to watch them. She started making excuses, but I told her what she did was inexcusable and immature. She ended up crying, and I just let that go on for a while before asking if she was done yet. She went back into bitch mode and yelled at me that the police were charging her with child abandonment. I said that wasn't really my fault since she left the kids in the hall. Then she said I would have called police on her as well if I was home, and she refused to come back for the kids. Because I told them before that I work Saturdays now. So I refused to be trapped into babysitting anymore. The rest of the call was some more pointless bickering on her end and didn't really go anywhere. My mom somehow ended up getting off with just a slap on the wrist and a fine because she somehow convinced the cops that she honestly thought I was home and would babysit, or so my next sibling said when he texted me. I don't know how much the fine was, but the fact she had to pay one should make her think twice about just leaving kids at my door and running off again. My dad wasn't charged as well because he was at work, and he also claimed to be unaware of her intent to leave my siblings at my door. I was told he was actually pissed at my mom for doing that. The pot and kettle situation this was had me laughing so hard. But I guess I have to give credit to my old man if he'd have never done what my mom did. Either way, that left my mom with a police record. That's a first strike in the eyes of the law, I think. After that, things really boiled over on Thanksgiving. My parents invited me over, and I was fully expecting it to be some kind of trap. And it was. At dinner, my dad just sat at the table smoking and acting like he was in charge. He had my mom sit me down and then said enough was enough and he was ending this farce. He told me that I needed to move back home and pay rent to help their mortgage and bills, as well as help parent my siblings because they don't have any time to themselves anymore, and the fine my mom had to pay hit their finances hard. I just said no, plain and simple, and I kept that up no matter how much he tried to order me. He ended up getting so angry that he actually attacked me, and he's not a small man. I thankfully am not either, as I'd been hitting the gym for months and learned some amateur fighting. I had my steel toe boots on as well. So I gave him a swift kick in the balls when he came at me, then punched him hard enough in the face that he was down on the floor in an instant. He landed with quite a thud and even threw up because of the pain while clutching his goodie bag. Then I told my parents that I had my phone recording in my pocket the whole time. And I could easily prove he attacked me first. My dad told me to get out of his house and never come back. And I obliged. But not before taking a turkey leg off the platter and riding home with it to eat. Since then, only my siblings have called or texted me. They said that I'd walked out like a boss, and there are now running jokes in the house about dad's poor balls. I spent Christmas with a friend family, and I've got a standing invite to come back for other holidays. Update 2. My mom was pregnant and my parents blamed me for losing the baby. Well, now I know why my parents tried to force me to move back in on Thanksgiving. My mom was pregnant with kid number 6. And I only recently found out. To start things off with, one of my siblings found my Reddit account not too long after my last post. And they showed it to our parents who in turn showed up at my apartment screaming at me about how I had set them up to get my mom arrested and made the world think they are bad parents. 
Well, they are. I called them out while standing in my doorway about all the shit they've done, right down to leaving my siblings at my door on a day they knew I worked. That's bad parenting any way you look at it. And it didn't really matter that I set them up, because I would have otherwise called the police on mom anyway when she left kids at my door. And in the end, it would have made no difference. My dad looked like he was ready to raise a fist to me, and I said that action alone proves me right that they're shitty parents. Then he stated that if he tried to hit me, it'd turn out like last time. And I don't think his balls could take another hit from my boots. And yes, I was wearing them. Dad seemed to wince and clench his legs together at the thought of what I did to him last time. So he ended up leaving and dragging my mom out by the hand. And he yelled back before leaving the hallway that he expected me to pay them back for the fine they had to pay for child abandonment since it was all my fault. I told them to fuck off and that I didn't know them shit. They didn't say anything back. It was just recently that I got some very bad news. My mom had been about six months pregnant, and she lost the baby after a bad fall at home when she slipped on wet porch steps and landed face down in gravel. Honestly, I couldn't tell she'd been pregnant at all the time I saw her prior to that. She's a bit on the heavier side and has always been clumsy. But not fat. Just enough that you really couldn't tell if she was pregnant or not. It is sad and this was her first miscarriage. So she really wanted someone to blame. And that someone had to be me in her eyes. Because I destroyed the family by not helping and by costing them so much money. She and dad showed up at my apartment again with her in crutches, just to say it was all my fault she lost the baby because I refused to come home and help when they needed me. It turned into a pretty big argument where I called them out on how they were just looking for free childcare and looking to blame me for something that's not my fault. It's not my fault they got pregnant again when mom is 44 years old. And it's not my fault, it happened anyway. Blame it on the rotten old porch, dad was too cheap to ever fix or replace. Well, my father laid his hands on me again when I said that, and I got a sharp right hook from him. And then I ended up kicking his ass one more time. I'd never really stopped working out at the gym, and I'm even stronger than I was when I took him down last Thanksgiving. He didn't stand a chance. I blanked out in a rage and ended up breaking his nose and knocking out both of his front teeth before my mom's screaming made me stop. Police were called, and I was put in cuffs while my father had to be taken to the hospital. Thankfully, the hallways for my apartment complex have CCTV. And I had my phone camera going behind me in my apartment as well, so I started recording when my parents knocked. The footage easily showed that my father attacked me first and I defended myself. I'm essentially in the clear, as it was labeled self-defense. But now my parents are wanting to sue me for my dad's medical bills and the fine they had to previously pay. Dad can't go to work for some time due to the beating I gave him. He's in a neck brace with a broken nose, a black eye, two lost teeth, and who knows what else. His beard also had to be shaved off, which he's also very unhappy about. He was already pretty much dead to me even before this. So I guess this makes him double dead to me. And what little power he ever thought he had as my father is gone. I'm physically much stronger than him, and soon I'll be starting a new job that pays way better thanks to all my hard work these past few months. And maybe with a few years of saving, I'll get a much better place to live. My eldest sibling called me to say I was their hero for beating the shit out of dad. And that they were planning on leaving just like I did when they turned 18. But it was my next sibling after them that found my Reddit posts after hearing them on YouTube, and that led to my parents finding out because my mom heard them talking about it and made them show my post to her. They said she was enraged and started breaking things. My siblings have apologized that they let mom and dad find out. And that they would have never said anything if they'd known mom was listening. Both have also said that they're happy there won't be another baby though. They're already having to do a lot of the childcare for my parents right now. And they hate it. They admitted to blaming me for leaving at first too. But they realized that when you become an adult, you deserve to take your own path. It's still up in the air whether or not my parents actually will try to sue me. But I think I can safely say that it'll be a loss for them if they do. One of my friend's uncles is a lawyer. And he said he'd represent me if my parents decide to sue. And he also says that they don't have much of a case since it was self-defense. And to my parents who will probably read this. I only have this to say. Leave me the hell alone. You don't own me or my siblings. And when the time comes for them to be able to leave at 18, I'll help them get out of your house. You both have always been selfish narcissists. It's not my fault mom lost the baby. And it's not my fault you had such a hard time without me in the house to be your free babysitter. Consider that broken nose and lost teeth as good reasons to never even touch me again. And don't forget that I have only told a fraction of the shit that went on in my life, thanks to y'all here. If I wanted to, I could post story after story of the shit that went on in my childhood. But that wouldn't bring me satisfaction. So just leave me the hell alone. Edit, I've asked my siblings for more details, and my mom was in the hospital for nearly a week with whatever injuries she had from the fall. Someone here questioned if she was pushed. Now I'm questioning that myself. But the best explanation I could get is that mom slipped and fell off the porch while in a hurry to leave somewhere. I've heard of people getting hurt worse in stupider ways. I've also looked into the cremation thing. And it said 7 to 10 days to get the ashes. So, that means the urn they came home with was empty then? I'm so confused. But then again, the funeral thing my parents did was several days after my mom got out of the hospital, and my parents kept that urn in the bedroom until the day of their little funeral. Guess they could have gotten the ashes then. Might explain why they came home drunk. But this situation is so weird and twisted that questioning it further is making my brain hurt. 
Update 3. I confronted my parents for the truth, and my dad confronted me with a knife. It feels gaudy to post again so soon. In my last post, I mentioned my mom miscarried in her recent pregnancy after a bad fall. Something didn't smell right about the information I got after all the comments I received about it. So I decided the only way I was going to get the truth was to go straight to the horse's mouth. So I went to see my parents on Sunday. They were both home and resting. They both look like hell too. My mom, aside from needing crutches to walk more than a few feet, has a lot of marks and bandages all over her face from that fall she took. And my dad, well, just see his description after the beating I gave him in my last post to see how he looked. My parents were beyond shocked I showed up. And I demanded to know if there ever really was a baby. Or if it was all just some half-assed plan to guilt me for not coming home. My dad said I had a lot of nerve showing up and just letting myself in after what happened. But my mom broke down in sobs and said she really had been pregnant. She lurched into the bedroom and retrieved a small but kind of ornate looking urn. And it had ashes inside it. I even checked to see if they looked or smelled like ashes from cigarettes or a barbecue or something. But they didn't smell anything like that. In fact, I barely smelled anything at all. I asked why they brought home the urn, claiming the ashes were in it before. I checked online, and it said 7 to 10 days at least to get ashes back. And mom was in the hospital for no more than 5 days. My mom said they bought the urn online and expected to get the baby's ashes back when they went to the crematorium. And they were really upset they couldn't bring the baby home yet. So they just waited until they could get the ashes a few days later. And then I went out to get drunk. Mom claimed the crematorium did things a little quicker because she begged them. There were genuine tears in her eyes. I've seen her crocodile tears many times. But this didn't look like that. I got more information as to what happened about how my mom fell. She was running late to see her doctor. An OBGYN or whatever they call them. Mom explained that she overslept while taking a nap and was trying to hurry out to make her appointment. Then she slipped on a toy while trying to get down the steps. The guardrails for the porch had rotted and broken off like two years ago and dad never fixed or replaced them. So my mom had nothing to grab onto in order to stop her fall. And down she went right off the porch and landed face and then belly into the ground. She even showed me marks all over her stomach from where she landed. She told me the baby would have been another boy. I've got two brothers and two sisters and there would have been one more brother. Then mom told me that a doctor warned her against ever trying to have another baby. Because her body might not be able to handle it again due to her age and prior injuries. I kind of figured that was the case after something people messaged me about it. But it didn't make it any easier to hear in person. Finally, I asked the big question. Why did she blame me? Mom started to say that day they showed up at my apartment was just really bad or something like that. But dad finally spoke up and interrupted her. He yelled that it's because it's all my fault. If I'd done like he said and moved back home at Thanksgiving, then I would have been there to help. And now a baby is dead because of me. I yelled at him that if he'd actually bothered to fix the damn porch, then mom might not have ever fallen. And that's on him. Plus, he didn't even bother to tell me mom was pregnant back at Thanksgiving. Not that it would have changed anything. We continued yelling at each other, and rather than side with anyone, my mom just left the room crying. My dad looked like a lit match from how red he was, and he brandished his old hunting knife at me while yelling to get out of his house. As I was leaving he said I was no longer his son. I told him that I'd not seen him as a father in years because he was always a terrible dad. But before I went out the door, I said to him that I'd be filing for a restraining order. And if he ever lays a hand on my siblings like he tried to do with me. Then next time he'll lose more than a couple of teeth. And I won't hesitate to call police or CPS if he tries the same crap with my siblings as he did me. He yelled plenty of insults at me from the front door, like you son of a bitch. I said back that was an insult to mom and he got red in the face again. Then I gave him a one-finger salute before riding away on my mountain bike. So yeah, I guess that's as good of an answer as I have for anyone. If this isn't the truth, then I don't know what is. But does it matter anymore? I'm filing for a restraining order as soon as I can. And I'll be looking to move apartments after I start bringing in money for my new job. I don't know if I'll feel like updating again after this. I'm just going to be depressed remembering all this. So I think I may be done here. Unless my parents decide to do something bad to my siblings. But hopefully I've gotten my point across to them. I've already beaten dad up twice, and he still looked somewhat afraid of me while clutching that knife. It felt like he was looking at a monster. Maybe I am in his eyes. But if my being a monster to him means he never hurts my siblings. Then that's fine. I'll be the monster. Sayonara everybody.